Okay, so an ethnography of Amazonian shamanism, anyone who's not familiar with the term ethnography, um, it basically means to study culture. Um, uh, it's systematic study of people and cultures designed to explore cultural phenomena where the researcher observes society from the point of view of the subject of study. Okay, um, so locally known as Corandero, the shaman of the Amazon make use of a plethora of plants and substances in their rituals and treatments. This study is focused on those that have been seen to migrate into Britain. The main interests of this study have been ayahuasca, cambo sapo, which is the uh, secretion of the phyllo medusa bicolor um, tree frog, um, chewed salvia, not smoked salvia because they don't really smoke it in the Amazon, and hape, which is a, a snuff um, made of tobacco that's used, and any other practices that attempt to mimic authentic corandero practices from the Amazon. Um, so my thesis it will be presented as a riser analysis, which is a methodology created out of Deleuze and Gratis concept of the rhizome. So that's a rhizome. It's basically uh, a root system that's, that's connected. It's about connections um, and connectivity. Um, so rhizome has horizontal shoots that take off in unpredictable directions, has no beginning, no end, it spills out in the middle. For Deleuze, a rhizome functions to disrupt and to create change and becoming. Um, in this, oh sorry, that's, uh, I should have read the quote a little bit better. <laughs> so, uh, da, 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 in order to reconceptualize it, rise of analysis and multiple literatures respectively, there's open potentialities for thinking differently about qualitative research. So that's from Mansi's paper, um, rise of uh, analytic pathways and qualitative research. So my data collection, for, this is for the whole of the PhD. Um, I've chosen three um, types of ethnography to bring them together to create one big ethnography. So I'm using traditional ethnography in the forms of participant observation and interviews. Um, Autoethnography, because I was actually part of uh, this, this cultural movement um, prior to becoming a researcher, so I've included my own um, experiences in, in the, the thesis and what I'm presenting to you today, which is the visual ethnography, and I've used various creative activities um, to create that. So, um, in Gobo's 2008 publication stage, doing ethnography, visual ethnography is described as the integration of documentary methodology with ethnographic methodology. Ethnographies are conducted using visual media, photographs and film clips in order to document an analysis, um, the analysis more graphically. So this is the view I've found about visual ethnography and all the literature I've read. Um, I can supply references on, on, on that, I didn't think it was important at this stage. Um, but I argue that the term visual can be interpreted in a much wider fashion than just using film and um, photographs um, uh, alone. So anything, any art, any drawings, anything, anything that's visual, if it's going to represent someone's culture, um, I argue it should be included and used to create a visual ethnography. So one crit criticism of the documentary style um, of visual ethnography is that anonymity of the participants is, is um, compromised from the outset. And for myself, where I'm observing um, practices that are questionably legal, illegal, um, that's a problem. So, um, and also, yeah, as I've said, uh, the term visual and its potential as a vehicle for research stretches much wider than documentary using film photographs and new media. Painting, sculptures and sketches are all visual and can all be used to communicate the ideas of their creator. Um, so getting participants to create a variety of artefacts and engage in different creative activities provides an avenue for communication that is not possible verbally. So it was able to allow me to um, dig a little bit deeper in some of the themes I found coming out of my interviews. Um, and my aim has been to use creative activities that are designed to open up communication, explore themes that have emerged from my interviews and observations, and this led for great, great depth in my investigations and for the project to be led more by the participants than by me. Uh, the results were aid triangulation and provide an interesting and stimulating presentation to aid research dissemination. At least I hope. <laughs> That's the plan. So, um, what I wanted to do was hire a room, get the participants in the room, have different tables and stations with different creative activities, and rotate the participants until everyone had had to go all of the activities. Um, there were a number of problems with this. First of all, obviously, anonymity is compromised. If you get a bunch of people in the room, they're not anonymous to each other anymore. Uh, 
Participants, my participants are scattered across Britain. Um, travel expenses will need to be covered. Also, finding a suitable venue and a fair location. Uh, the availability of the participants and the cost of materials. So at this point, I'm scratching my head and going, I don't know if I can do this, but I really want to do this. And so I sat down with my supervisors and we formed a solution, which is this. This is an online forum that I created. Um, I made it private, so I had to accept members um, so that you know the public couldn't see anything that was posted on there um, to maintain that, that, that sense of anonymity. And also, obviously, people could pick a pseudonym for themselves. I posted all the activities on there and, and sent people off to do them in their own time. So the first activity I did, I asked them to do, so I posted a list of themes on the forum and hidden them with spoiler tags. I didn't want to see them in advance. Um, the participants were asked to work on one theme at a time and only to read each theme when they were ready to work on it. I didn't want them thinking about this or not. The idea of this activity was to, to see what just falled out of their head. Um, so, time themselves for 60 seconds using a blank word document for each theme. Participants were asked to type as many words or small phrases that came to mind on that given theme. And they asked to put these words or phrases into PowerPoint, one slide for each theme, and arrange them around the theme title. They were asked to consider the position that they placed the words um, in terms of how they felt that those, those words related to each other. And they were instructed to accurately represent any repetition of words on their slides also. Then they were invited to experiment with text and colour to represent grouping and text size to represent how important they felt each word and phrase was to them. And it was advised that no more than an hour was spent on the activity overall. So I've only put up the one slide because there were a number of themes. Um, I've just chosen one Amazon shamanism for you. Um, I had four of my 11 participants from the original set of interviews, I had four participants come back for this stage of the research. Um, so participant one. I'm not going to analyse them now, I've done a, a conclusive bit at the end, so um, just for you to have a look. Participant 2. Number 3. Um, and this one I quite liked, he took it a little bit further. I've, I've typed those up for you because it was really difficult to read. Um, some wonderful words coming out there, and then at the bottom, we've got work, street, work, city, work, state, work, zip, work, phone. <laughs> so I don't know where that going with that. Activity two. So using any medium of their choice, participants were asked to create an image that expressed their experience of ayahuasca, capturing any element that felt important to them. They're reminded that it was not about the quality of their art skills, but about the expression and they were advised to spend around 20 to 30 minutes on this exercise or more time if they wanted to. Um, so that's participant one. So I think he's got some artistic skills in there. Participant two, maybe not so much, but you know, we're not judging that. Uh, participant three. And participant four. I think he's having fun. Um, so activity three, uh, it was knowledge that the activity, activity three would seem kind of complicated and knew from the start that they'd be like, what? So um, using software of their choice, participants were asked to create a page with a black, back, black background and on the bottom of the page, they were asked to place a little grey stick figure that would represent themselves. They were, to provide a list, they were also provided with a list of words and asked to create a shape to represent each word. Shapes could be used more than once. Um, shape and colour needed to be representative of what they felt the word meant to them. Okay, and then the words were God, religion, spirituality, community, education, pharmaceutical medicine, shamanism, central government, um, family, friends, health, local government, and national health services. So I wanted to see how these people felt about, about all these different things. So they were told to create a key to inform you which shape represented each word. And then they were asked to consider space as representative connectivity, and they're instructed to place the shapes in terms of how they felt the word was, to, um, how they felt the word was connected to them as an individual, um, and how, and how the words connected to each other also. So the closer the position, the more connected things are. And then they were asked to resize the shapes in order to represent the influence that they felt each thing had on them too. So this is German number one. So. Um, Quite a lot to look at there, really. Um, obviously, he's got he's, he's actually created himself. He he is our health, which makes sense. And um, with his friends and family, very very close there. Uh, God, right 
at the top and then yeah so this pot is meant two so I think they were making use of PowerPoint a lot um, obviously got God very near spirituality is huge for this person I'll go into that a little bit more participant three I don't feel I have enough to say about these topics you're asking so I was like oh, okay thanks <laughs> Cheers. Um, and then participant four um, very connected to friends and family and spirituality again um, so activity four Participants have to put some thought into this activity, take it a day or even a week to think it through. Um, the first part of this activity was participants to think of a metaphor that answered the following question. What does Amazonian shamanism mean to you? Okay. So using any medium of their choice, participants were asked to create a visual representation of this metaphor. Again, they were reminded that artistic skills were not important here, but rather the expression. It was advised that about an hour should be spent on this, more time on the actual drawing and more time if they if they chose so that's participant one participant two didn't have enough to say on this subject <laughs> and participant four and that says shamanism is a sign a journey with unlimited direction Number five, so spending a minimum of 20 minutes and a maximum of an evening, participants were asked to think of one word that summed up what their involvement in Amazonian shamanism had given to them. So that's number one. Number two. He didn't have enough to say. And number four. So conclusions. In terms of the method that I used, using the internet for activities of this nature is highly problematic in terms of participant dedication and commitment. I must have extended the deadline about five times for them. <laughs> and uh, some participants were also confused by my instructions. Uh, even where participants are c confident they understand the instructions, it's not necessarily the case in all instances. So they might think that they've got it right and they know what they're doing, go off and do it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to accept it, but it's not really what I was looking for, but that's fine. Um, so, um, obviously group meetings in person were not suitable when, research, um, when researching matters of questionable legality and um, asking participants to create artifacts can open up lines of, however, open up, uh, asking participants to create artifacts can open up lines of communication not otherwise accessible. It led for a new kind of expression and this should be embraced by all visual ethnographers, I, I believe. Um, and so when extracting meaning from the images, uh, colours and symbols, the research of bias is unavoidable. We tend to use our own experiences of cultural heritage as a point of reference. Interpretation is difficult to ascertain with certainty. certainty. There can be much discussion about the ability of the communicator skills to put across their ideas compared to the ability to accurately translate them and understand what is communicated. So preliminary conclusions. So activity one. I drew up a list of themes that stood out from the slides, and they were healing, ancient, spiritual, evaluation, secret, realms, plants, nature, and ayahuasca. So that tells us quite a lot about why, why people are turning to um, Amazonian shamanism um, here, um, and, and, and how they feel about it, what, they, what they're getting from that. Uh, participants have seemed to have their own focuses, and there wasn't much to link, so in terms of my rise of analysis um, in this particular set of data, I wasn't really able to make that many links um, and connections because they seem to have their own themes. Um, for one, it would be about uh, spirituality. For another, it would be about healing. Um, and I surmise that primarily they converged at the idea of self-development. Um, they liked it because it was ancient and they were drawn towards this concept of transcendence. Okay, so activity two. Um, eyes were the only theme that appeared in two pictures. Uh, for one, it was all about questions, another, Mother Ayahuasca and bring, uh, the Bringer of Change. For participant two, nature and the all seeing eye uh, were what ex uh, expressed Ayahuasca to them. Uh, participant three was shown that he'd um, been a twin at birth. This is a vision he'd seen in his Ayahuasca, so that's why he put the twins on there. And for him, it had been more um, a, just a psychedelic experience rather than anything spiritual or healing. 
Um, he also um, linked the eye theme too, so something about seeing there is the, there's something, but I, I know him as a staunch atheist, so there's no spirituality really. Um, activity three. Um, so then to be the closest to the participant with the following themes. Um, so this is the one where uh, they have to draw the little stick man and position the, the shapes. Um, so uh, each, uh, each had two participants feeling connected to it most. So spirituality, family, friends and health, they all had two participants that felt very closely connected to these things. Following themes were close, but only one participant um, was, was close to each, each theme. God, education and community. And participants did not feel connected to the following themes. Religion, shamanism, central government, local government and the NHS. Um, the exercise showed me more about uh, the individuals on a personal level um, without the, the Amazonian shamanism, so this was more tapping into them, um, separate, separate from their practices really, I think, um, and their involvement. Okay, activity four. So, uh, there were no links between any of these images produced. Participant one seems Amazonian shamanism is providing him with a new set of eyes. Um, participant um, two linked it to our closest celestial bodies. Um, that, it, that was the big orange shape that you saw with the blue around, um, and it was explained to me that that was the sun and the moon was surrounding the sun, that's what I was. Um, so uh, that's why uh, they were linking it to the, to the celestial bodies. Uh, participant three didn't have enough to say, and participant four said a lot with nothing. So that's the, uh, the one with the little quote across the top and the blank page. So he sees sex shamanism as a sign, a journey with unlimited direction, but obviously he, he produced a blank page, so he was saying it's, you know, it's, um, the, it's opportunities and it's um, a, a, a chance for fresh, fresh starts. Um, and from the point of view of Rizo analysis, the question of what Amazonian shamanism means may be too big a question to foster links and to create them. Um, that's why I, I assume. And activity five, uh, one word to sum up what involvement, um, oh, I didn't, did I go through this? So, um, activity five was, yeah, I'd, I'd ask them to create a word and kind of play, play around with some typography. Um, they were also asked to experiment with typography to announce meaning. Um, participant one chose healing and attached this to the colour green and a transition from darkness to light. Uh, participant cho two chose vision, and this was a second piece for them to feature an eye. So for them, it's very much about seeing, seeing into something, um, seeing what you can't see in, in the usual experience of life. Um, and so yeah, so uh, this time there is a clear reference to it having a having a great perspective because uh, there was the eye with the, the globe on there. I can go. So it's about having this, this greater perspective um, in, in life. Uh, try not to boo participant three, but <laughs> he didn't, it's his right not to take part, he didn't have anything to say. And participant four chose remind, which could refer to past life or reprogramming your mind. I know this gentleman likes to play around with words and um, uh, he, he uh, so... Um, and for the second time, he created a lot of empty space on that page. So f for him, I think it's about new beginnings and um, having that having that fresh start. So that's the I've gone really really quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'd like to um, I'd like to dedicate this talk to um, a friend of mine that, that um, passed very recently, um, and um, he he will be sadly missed. And, and um, thank you very much.